Hey, God, is a lie. This had better be a joke. Wait, first, let me add water to it. Ha! More down. Hey guys, this is Chicks from Patchwork of Tips. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I've been using the Xiaomi Pinlow Portable Blender for the past week and here are my thoughts on the device. It comes in a well padded white box with Chinese wordings all over it as this isn't a global product, if I'm not mistaken. In the box you get the 350ml plastic cup, the 70 watt blender motor with its micro USB charging port. this plastic ring which covers the micro motion protection device, a micro USB cable and a lid for the blender cup. There is also a user manual which is unfortunately in Chinese. The red stains you see on the blender and my fingers as well are from chopping and blending red bell peppers. This is one of my beefs with this device. I wish it came in all black color. It took me 2 hours to fully charge the blender's 1800mAh battery out of the box. While charging it, it blinks white and then stays white when fully charged. Operating it isn't quite straightforward as it has an accidental power on prevention mechanism in place. When you push the power button once, it turns red as a warning of sorts. To get it blending, you need to press the power button twice rapidly. To power off, simply press the power button once. The blender is designed to automatically turn itself off after 30 seconds of operation. Still on the power button, it flashes red when the cup isn't properly attached to the blender motor and white when it's well attached, meaning you can proceed to operating the device. Note. From the reviews I've seen online, it's highly recommended you dice your fruits and veggies well before throwing them into this blender or you will be sorely disappointed. You also need to add some liquid to the blender to facilitate the movement of the blades. Test 1. I've got some water, scotch bonnet pepper, bell pepper and onions in the blender. For the next test, I've got just chopped tomatoes in here, no water. We've got tomatoes, scotch bonnet pepper and bell pepper with no water in the blender. For those of you that want to test the theory that it doesn't blend huge chunks of fruits and veggies, in here I've got onion, scotch bonnet pepper and tomato chunks. No water at all. As you can see, it's an absolute no-no. It's having an issue blending this. You need to dice them veggies for this to work. Even when I added water to it, it still didn't blend. Washing the blender is pretty easy but you should be careful not to get water in the USB port as this could ruin the device. Just put a tip over it when washing it. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with this blender given that it works as efficiently well as my 200W electric blender. Strange no? Oh well. 
I'll leave you guys with the following tips for optimum results. 1. Always add water before blending as per manufacturer's instructions and always dice them veggies and fruits. 2. Stick to soft veggies and fruits. For hard fruits and veggies, you should get the electric blender instead. 3. If you don't wish to use water in your blend, make sure one of your fruits or veggies is rich in water and when stacking the blender cup, the water-rich soft veggies or fruits should be the one in direct contact with the blades before operation. This way you can use the water from the fruits to blend the entire veggies. Questions and comments are welcome down below. Don't forget to please subscribe to this channel and like this video if it was helpful in any way. I'll see you guys in my next video. Have a great weekend.